Ladies and gentlemen, once again, it's time for the 13 Nights of Halloween. Starring Big Anklevich and Rish Outfield. Hi everybody, this is Big Anklevich. And this is Rish Outfield. Ooh, scary voice. Finish, go on. And uh, donate to the podcast and buy big a new computer. <laughs> or die. Okay. I was expecting you to say, Welcome to another installment of the 13 Nights of Halloween. But you just did. No, I didn't. I did now. Yeah, I guess. After you were done. So that works. It's kind of turning things on their heads this time around. Saying donate before we even tell you what it is that we're doing. But it works. But this isn't the first night. That's true. We've been doing this for a few nights now. Trying to come up with topics to, to discuss Halloweeny topics. And You're a weenie topic. That is true. Uh, have you found it more difficult this year than last year? Uh, a little bit, just because I don't want to repeat myself from last year. You know what I mean? <sighs> Unfortunately, I mean, what we really should have done is made, forced ourselves to listen to all 13 episodes from last year. Just so that we know what we said last year. Because, yeah, it's hard. I'm just like, yeah, I probably talked about this last year. Yeah, no donations are worth that. <laughs> Some things I vaguely remember that I said or talked about, and other things I'm just like, I don't know, maybe? Hopefully I didn't repeat myself. Hopefully nobody listened to last year's marathon and then listened to this year's immediately after. Because, yes, we're bound to have repeated ourselves a little bit because it's only been a year compared to our whole lives. Yeah, what well, kind of know. experiences could we have had? Right, yeah. If, if we're talking about fear of scorpions... I've encountered a scorpion in the wild once in my lifetime. That's cool. And so that's not going to change. Yeah, I've never encountered a scorpion in the wild yet. Although I know they're around here. I know somebody who caught one and they had it in a jar. And I was like, oh, can I take that home and show it to the kids? And they said, sure. And then I forgot to. That was my... uh, crossfit trainer and so i'm like oh cool and then i did crossfit and you just, I just left, left it on the back seat of your car and there it the was whole weekend and the bottle was empty when you went to return it now see hey would that upset you would you've got a tiny car i mean <laughs> tiny like my genital sized tiny car and that's because i have nothing to prove oh uh, you know hey that's pretty good the <laughs> idea is that yeah there's a scorpion in a bottle and you've got it in the car and then when you go to take it in the house, the bottle is empty. How much would that freak you out? Would you be able to drive to work? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably spend a lot of time looking for it. That's for sure. But you can't like reach under the, the seat and yeah. feel around. I mean, I guess you could, but would you? <laughs> no, no. You'd probably like try and slide it forward and back and all the stuff that you do. But that would be a, a pretty good scenario. You know, when I was in South America, you know, you come home at night, you turn on the lights, and the cockroaches scatter. Usually when I would do that, I would try and see how many there were. And then I would pull everything out from under the beds. I would pull everything out from under everywhere until I found all of them and killed them. Because I just could not go to sleep at night knowing that they were in the house and they could just come on out and climb in my mouth while I was asleep or something. I just could not go to sleep with that uh, possibility. So maybe I would do that with a scorpion too. I don't know. Just the idea though that you're driving home from work it's night and and it's been two or three days you've forgotten completely <laughs> and then yeah across your back you feel that you know because they, they don't have feet. They have just points at the end of their legs so you'd feel that digging in each one of those little feet digging into the your back as it's climbing up. And, oh, geez. I mean, would you immediately know that's what it was? <laughs> <laughs> or I, And, and it, would it be more horrible to immediately know that's what it is? Or to just be like, oh, geez, that's... <gasps> and you see, you know, what's crawling up your shoulder. Hmm, I don't know. I wonder, are there scorpions that are very poisonous? There are. not Not around here. Yeah. But like Mexico's got them, uh, Australia's got them, like you wouldn't believe. So. Ones that would sting you and you would wind up dead from it? 
you know, I don't know. I, the, they say that as a scorpion matures, its venom becomes less potent. Mm -hmm. So a very tiny little scorpion could hurt you badly or, or kill you. Or put yeah, you that was shock. the thing from Indiana Jones, right? Where he's like, oh, I just got stung with a scorpion. Was it's it a big scorpion or a little scorpion? Huge. Oh, good. He says, yeah, let me know if a little scorpion stings you or bites you or whatever he said. And do their pinchers actually hurt if you get pinched? Well, yeah, I mean, they, that's how they tear apart their prey. That's how they, you know, do battle and stuff. <clears throat> um, just, I mean, you've been pinched by a, a crab before or a lobster or a, you know, crawdad or something like that. And it, it's, I don't it's, know it's, if I actually ever have. I have held crawdads, but I don't know if I've ever been pinched by one. It's been a very long time since I held a crawdad, too, not since I was really little. Well, see, I wanted to talk about a different subject, but let's talk about crawly things for a few minutes. Okay. Is that okay? We uh, went fishing two months ago now. I mean, it wasn't that long ago. August, I think. Okay. And I went fishing with my brother-in-law and my nephew, who's five. And I didn't even get a single bite. In fact, I don't know that either of us got a bite the whole time we were fishing. And my nephew just got bored and... He was running around was saying, can we go back now? And his dad said, you know, why don't you look for crawdads? I think, yeah, I, uh, either cr some people call them crayfish, mm -hmm. uh, but my brother-in-law called them crawdads. Why don't you look for crawdads? There's lots of them here in the, in the water. Well, I perked up, you know, I had been reading a, a book, you know, and every once in a while glancing at my fishing pole and it did nothing. You know, I'd reel it in and cast out again as if that would magically change things. But as soon as he said there were crawdads, I was like, really? Here? I I want to see some. And yeah, for like the next two hours, my nephew and I waded through the water, turning over rocks and trying to catch crawdads. And at first, I was so afraid to, to try and grab them. Because yeah, they have these great, I mean, out of proportion with their bodies, <laughs> claws. They, I mean, they're, they're tiny little lobsters, right? Right. But my nephew had no such fear at all. And he'd grab one with his tiny little hands and you'd see the crawdads just digging in to his skin with their claws. And he'd just be like, no, you know, and, he, and he'd put it in a bucket so that we could take him home. And after a while, I got used to it. But still, it, it wasn't that it hurt. It was seeing that it was pinching me. It had some kind of psychological shake it off, shake it off effect. You know hmm. what I mean? I didn't choose for my hand to go, Ugh! but it, there was a revulsion from way we deep down, like built into our DNA, if something is biting you, something is stinging, you shake your hand kind of thing. And so I'd lost a couple of them, you know, like great big ones, not because I wanted to or maybe because I'm a huge wuss. I don't know. <laughs> but but because I'd see, oh, it's pinching me. Got to get rid of it. Interesting. Yeah, but it didn't really hurt when it was pinching you? Not really. I mean, it, you felt the pressure or whatever and, and, and it pinched. Just like a clothespin or something like that, you know, it's more pressure than mm -hmm. actual pain. Anyway, I guess that's off topic, but is it the idea of of crawly <laughs> things, of things, you know, because like the scorpion, the crawdads have you know the two big pincher arms, but then these tiny little legs, right? And the way that the legs lift up and down and move, there is something unnerving about that. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's because they have eight legs. Don't they have eight legs? They're arachnids, aren't they? Oh, they're crustaceans. Oh, that's not the same. Um, but I, they, I believe they do have eight. So, I mean, they would have four of those and then the two up front. Um, that only makes six. Scor scorpions, though, all are arachnids, right? Or are they also crustaceans? Scorpions are arachnids, I'm pretty sure. I didn't know that there was a difference. Like, crustaceans being in water makes them different. Because mm. they're basically... A crawdad is the same as a scorpion, except for it has a swimmy tail instead of a stingy tail. That's true. They are, and a yeah. lobster is the same thing, but larger. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know that whole animal tree. What do they call that crap? Animal kingdom and what the various branches off of it as to what they fit in. But they're not insects because they only have six legs. That's true. We, we, we agree they are not insects. We have decided... You are not orcs. There you go. <laughs> okay, so cr creepy things, crawly things. Uh, yeah, we've had this discussion before. Is there any bug that is scarier to you than a cockroach? Maybe a big spider? A scary spider? A 
Black Widow probably scares me a lot more than a cockroach. I mean, a cockroach is gross. A cockroach is not really scary. A cockroach is gross. You know what I mean? It's a little different. Like a cockroach is a disgusting thing that you don't want around because it's disgusting. Not because you don't fear it, you know. You don't run from a cockroach. You run at it and step on it. Mm. Whereas... If you see maybe a giant spider or a, a black widow or something like that, you may just run the other direction. Although, I suppose, if it's in your house or something like that, you're going to react the same way and try and kill the black widow because you don't want it around to be able to get in your mouth while you're asleep. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, okay, but crickets. You and I have had animals that eat crickets, and so we have no problem you know, going to the pet store and getting them and catching them or you know holding them out to the animal. A cricket and a cockroach are so close. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like in the way that they move, in the, their behavior, except for you don't hear cockroaches singing, although they're hissing cockroaches. Uh, but I am not afraid or revolted by a cricket in any way. I love crickets. I think they're cool and neat and would never stomp on one. But But you would pick it up and feed it to your well, larger animal. Yeah. I, I don't know. That may, does that make me a monster? No, you are a monster, but that's not what makes you one. Agreed. <laughs> but why is it that if I see a cockroach, and, you know, a cockroach the exact same size as a cricket, doing exactly the same thing as a cricket would, why does that make me go, Ugh! and a cricket make it's me go, hey, look, cricket. I think it might be because cockroaches are what you would consider vermin. Whereas a cricket is not so much that. I don't know what a, the definition of a vermin is per se, but in my mind, I think it is being a small creature that carries diseases. Oh, okay. Like a rat. You wouldn't let a rat just live in your house. You know what I mean? If you find out you've got a rat, well, then you immediately start setting out traps and start doing things to try and get rid of this rat and a mouse. Those kind of things, all those are the same kind of a deal where if you've got one of these things in your house, you don't want it, you know, because it's probably got something that it may well infect you with. And I think cockroaches are known to be those kind of bugs, the kind that can transmit diseases like moths. <laughs> Did you make a noise? Did it, I, it sounded like a, a, a chittery little... I didn't make that noise. You just imagined it yourself. I must have. That's cool. Okay, uh, we've already discussed your loathing for flies. Fear and loathing? But uh, a fly, fly is, Vegas. is a fly vermin? Because surely a fly can spread disease. Yeah, I would think that they... Well, I don't know if they... I'm actually looking up vermin now to see... Um, oh, it says vermin are pests or nuisance animals especially those that threaten human society by spreading disease or destroying crops or livestock. So I guess crickets count as vermin then because they do destroy crops. They're like a lot. Locusts or grasshoppers. Yeah, they're like locusts and grasshoppers that just swarm through a field and eat everything of worth in it. And hey, have you ever seen a Mormon cricket? Um, Those big, I, like, three I inch. went by the church one time. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, these are the crickets that come to your door in twos. Oh, oh, is that what it is? They come by and knock on your door and want to teach you a little something about Jesus? Okay. Those crickets. Yes, yes. I, I did have some of those come by my house the other day. But I managed to convince them that I was busy. <laughs> uh, you've never said... I mean, well, isn't that what they call them? The great big I brown? Think, I think I have heard of that, yes. I think they actually have them around here. Oh, um, geez. Are they the one of the ones that like swarm where you just get thousands and yeah. thousands and they just start at one end of the field and eat the whole thing and then just keep marching in one direction until they've eaten like all crops in the entire bread basket of the United States? It, exactly. Uh, they are, uh, I would almost say, a plague of crickets. I mean, we used to always hear about locusts coming, you know, just like a swarm of locusts that descend on a field, consume everything, and then move on. Um, and but and these crickets... They come, they eat, they leave. They come, they eat, they leave. <laughs> this is a bug's life? Yes. 
if I had any Bugs Life quotes except for that really lame one that Phyllis Diller had, I would give it to you now. <laughs> um, the it's our lot in yeah, life one. <laughs> uh, for a long time, I felt like well, it was Pixar's weakest film. And I think that was the reason. Because of that line, I actually enjoyed that line. Cheesy pun, but it's meant to be a cheesy pun. It was in the ad campaign, man. Uh, well, they always pick the worst things for the ad campaign. They certainly do. But anyhow, one time uh, when I was visiting from California, I drove through a canyon to get home and somebody had spread tar all over the road in front of me. And I was just like, what the hell? And I stopped and the tar was moving. It was a black mass moving across the road. I mean, I was stopped in the middle of the road, just gaping in awe at this. And what it was was a colony or swarm or whatever you call the a, a murder of Mormon <laughs> crickets. And I'd never seen that in my life. It was astounding. There were so many of them that it was a blanket. And see, uh, that is creepy. I I would not be able to handle crickets if I was in your shoes and had actually witnessed that. You say you're not scared of them. Had I seen that, I probably would be. Because that sounds like that stuff from Creepshow with the cockroaches. Like the you see the, the rug and it's rippling and <laughs> stuff. And then he pulls it off and it's completely covered underneath with crick with uh, sorry, crickets, with cockroaches. Like that is the kind of thing that would freak me out to see that many at once. It's like the scenes from Indiana Jones, you know, where they go into the bugs and there's bugs everywhere. They're everywhere on everything and you can't step without crunching all of them under your feet with every step. You can't touch anything without them going right up your arms. You know, that kind of thing is the kind of thing that gives you a phobia from there on out. And then, yeah, you're totally right. I, I, I finally, uh, it occurred to me, I'm stopped in the middle of the road. <laughs> I mean, how easy would it be for a, a vehicle to just come up behind me? They don't expect to see some guy stopped. And so, of course, they're going to smash into me. And, and you know, so I, I got back in the car and I drove over them. And there was, you know, a just line, smashed line where my car had been. And I'm sure the next vehicle made another smashed line until these things got off the road. The few, you know, the ones that didn't get smashed. And I, I told Ian, our friend, when I got home about this thing. And he says, you got to write a story about that. He goes, I've never seen that in my life. And, and yeah, I, I looked it up and there had even been an article about uh, infestation, whatever you call it, of Mormon crickets that year, and and how many acres of crops they speculated had been eaten, the, you know, during like a three week period before they all went dormant or died out, or, or you know, the the, the 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 bald eagles came to eat them all because uh, because Gandalf had sent a message, but it's it was nature out of control, I guess, kind of thing. You know uh -huh. what I mean? We don't see unless it's birds animals in that kind of number oh bees you see bees at a hive or something like that where they cover where it's a mass but it, you've seen when birds are flocking and it's not just a hundred birds but it's like 750 birds all moving at once in a big black mass uh -huh. and that kind of thing it's not scary necessarily but it's awe inspiring yeah like, they, how is that possible they move in this kind of strange just flowing shape that like it's, it's not, like you took a circle and then you just kept stretching it here and there and it keeps flowing back and forth and around like it's some kind of single entity exactly it's not a group it's one being yeah, I and heard. That's what the crickets were like. I, uh, Jessica Hoop, who I've, I wonder if oh, I've she's ever a mentioned her mentioned on. Before. Have I mentioned her on the show at all? I think so. I know I've mentioned her on like Facebook and on my blog. This is, this is a singer that I fell in love with probably sometime last year. I think is when I first heard her. When you were on the outs with your wife, I remember. Yes, yes, but yeah, she uh, she has a song that's called "Murder of Birds." And I just saw Jessica Hoop in concert for the first time like a month and a half ago or something like that. It was actually right in the middle of the time where I was homeless. And I'd bought the tickets way before that. And then I'm just like, where do I leave my kids? I don't have a home to leave them at. But uh, we figured it out. Anyways, I went and saw the show and she was talking about that. Because, you know, she started out with her song Murder of Birds. And she asked if we had Starling in the area and then she's like do you say starling or starlings i like saying starling so i'm gonna say that do you guys have starling here 
And she just talked about how they're the, I guess, the birds that do that thing where they do the shape shifting amoeba thing. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, like it's some kind of a sense that the birds have where they're like mirroring the movements of like the all the eight or ten or whatever birds within the closest vicinity to them. So they keep floating about. You know, or I guess they're not floating, they're flapping about or whatever, but they basically will keep themselves with this sense far enough away that they won't collide with any of the other birds. So I don't know exactly what the, why they do that, this whole flocking thing that they do. It seems like they do it usually at dusk time, you know, like you're driving home from work and you see them flying all around like that. I don't know. It's a really, the rest of the day, they're all just lined up on the uh, power lines or whatever just in huge huge you you ever see that where you like go past a power pole and it's just covered with birds and they're just all down the lines and all that stuff and you're just like you know it's kind of like seeing the bees in the hive you know they're all just sitting there waiting and you know what's really interesting with bees in hives is when they decide to swarm and now they're not on a hive they've just there's a new queen or whatever and they get up and they fly away and there's just a gob of bees And they just go and land somewhere, and then they're just there, all crawling all over it. This is something you've witnessed? I've seen video. Oh. (laughs) I've not seen it in real life, but yeah, you know, they're just there. They, like, go and land on a tree or something. And then the guy that owns the house that has the tree comes out and finds that, and he's like, oh, crap. And so he'll call the, I don't know what you call it. Ghostbusters? Animal services or who you would call, but they, why, they, they, there's a list. Like, my brother, I actually have two brothers who've got... Or have actually, had. you have like nine brothers, right? But, but uh, the two that have had beehives of their own in their uh, yards. I had one my, my uh, one of my older brothers started doing that years ago. He got himself hives, and then he had to go and get the bees. And basically, yeah, once you have a hive, you like get yourself on a list or something. You know, you call the Ghostbusters, and they just look on their list. Okay. This guy, hey, there's a bee swarm, and it's at this place. You want to go get it? And you go with them? No, you go by yourself. You're the guy who gets it. You just go get it. No, you don't. You get your hive, and you go get the bees, and you put them in there, and you bring it back to your house, and then you have honey. I can't believe that. That's how people that there keep bees be, get bees. There have to be like people that say, like, I'm trained to do this. Don't. Hey, well, you've got Bermuda shorts on, sir. <laughs> if you do that, then you're dumb. But yeah, you are a beekeeper. Yeah, you read the book or whatever. I don't know what you do to train yourself. But yeah, that's how you get bees. That's something that's kind of creepy too. Is just the whole swarming thing of bees. But yeah, he was. I saw my brother just a little while ago. That my younger brother that also keeps bees now. And yeah, he's like, yeah, I've gone to. I was telling him because we did a story on the news about they found in somebody's house, like in the wall of their house. These people, and and I guess they'd been hearing it for like a year. I don't know. They'd been there for a while where they'd hear this weird noise. Like, what is that? And finally it got so loud and they like saw a bee or something like crawling in there or something. They're like, oh, crap, we've got bees in our walls. And so they called and somebody came to get the bees. And there was like 15 pounds or something like that of bees. It was like the biggest friggin' hive ever or something like, I don't know what the deal was, but I was just asking about that. And he's like, yeah, I've gone. I, I had to get bees out of somebody's wall once. <laughs> so you just told them you were going to bust a hole in their wall. And they're like, yeah, I and mean, that's the deal. They got to, I'll, I'll get the bees out, but I'm not going to fix the, you know, the hole. That, that's their deal. They got to take no, care no, of that. No, no, it's worth it to, to have a hole out. in your wall to get those out. Of the, <laughs> you know how people, you'll see like on effed up television shows, People with a beard of bees. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to uh, talk about. I saw on... Uh, Dave, that's incredible. <laughs> I saw on Dave Thompson's blog, the, uh-huh. the guy from Podcastle. Uh-huh. He he made a speedo of bees and oh, he had nice. pictures of himself that way. And dude, I'm lying, but <laughs> you could not get me in a speedo of bees. <laughs> so you're lying. You could get you into a speedo of oh, bees. Oh, hell then. yeah. The three times a, a week, <laughs> at least. The weight just pours off. Just the, yeah, that that also is something that I don't understand. It, it takes a special kind of person, and I should have made quotes in the air when I said special, to allow the bees to make a beard on, on themselves. And 
I know I've seen people interviewed and they're like, yo, I get stung all the time, all the time on my face and stuff. Why would you still do it then? <laughs> I don't know. I think at a certain, you know, it's funny. When was the last time you were stung by a bee? Oh, geez. It's going on 20 years. When was the last time you floated like a butterfly? <laughs> no, yeah. See, the same thing with me. I haven't been stung by a bee in a really long time. I'm 20 years or more. And so do you think being stung by a bee is really as bad as you remember it? Or is it just because you were a little, little kid the last time it happened? And now no, no, no. Go- I wasn't a little kid. I, I, like I said, it was, it was less than 20 years ago. Look, we've both been kicked in the junk before. <laughs> I don't ever want to be kicked in the junk again. Even if, yes, maybe I've built it up in my mind of just like, oh, oh, no, oh, and it doesn't go away and you can't function. Like I was telling you earlier today, I had friends that would actually do that. They'd be walking around and they'd have a hacky sack in their hand and they'd just throw it at your junk and say, hey, cup check. You know, if they were throwing, you don't need them because they're not good friends. There you go. That's definitely true. But yeah, I, it's not nearly, I would say, as bad as being kicked in the junk, getting stung by a bee. I I think I was so scared of being stung by a bee that I actually would imagine that I was stung by a bee, even though a bee didn't actually sting me. It just landed on me. You know, I remember one time <laughs> when I was a kid, I was sitting in the backyard eating watermelon, and a bee came and actually landed on my lip. It was on my lip crawling around, and I sat there, you know, because... You don't scare a bee because that's what makes it sting you, right? So I tried to sit still until this thing went away. (laughs) But, dude, your lip is like the second worst place you'd have a bee on. And finally, I just freaked out and went, and threw my watermelon. I think I had a whole. You were eating an entire watermelon? I think I had a whole. How fat a kid were you? (laughs) I think I had a whole container of cut pieces of watermelon in my lap as well. And I threw that whole container, the one that was in my hand, and went screaming into the house over this bee and then claimed to have been stung. But I don't know that I actually was. I probably was never stung by this bee. But I imagined that I had because it was on my lip. But yeah, I think that's that's kind of a lot of what it is. You know, like these guys that, like my brother, the beekeeper, was saying, yeah, I get stung sometimes, but it's not as bad as you imagined or you remember it being from when you were a child and you actually would be out in a place where you would get stung by a bee, you know, doing the things that piss bees off so that they'll sting you. Stop her. Stop her. Mommy stinger. <laughs> I always loved that line. <laughs> so, yes, please. That will really help. <laughs> but yeah, bees, I guess, can be pretty creepy, which is funny because, you know, we... We already talked in previous episode about the lack of bees and how that scares me, too. <laughs> You're bees. just not going to be satisfied until we're all dead, sir. Yeah, bees are bees are all tied up in my fears. I'm afraid of bees and afraid of not having bees. <laughs> afraid of the dark, afraid of the light. Yep, that's me. But, but bees are a, a one and then done kind of animal. Uh, and so I'm afraid of a bee... But a wasp, you know. They're the skinheads of the insect world. They are. Is that Billy Connolly? (laughs) They're like the skinheads of the... Wasps will sting Insect kingdom. It's because they want to. There is nothing... I'm, again, ostensibly a grown man. And if a wasp lands on me, I can't do anything. I freeze up. It's like I can't concentrate on something. If I'm on the phone, I have to go silent. It's just like my terror of the wasp is so out of proportion to how big and how dangerous and how mean a wasp really is. Because I, you know, of of the 20 wasps that have landed on me, I've been stung once. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And, and maybe I've been had a lot more than 20 land on me and I didn't even know it. But I don't think that they're pit bulls. I don't think that they're vicious. I mean, they have a a defense mechanism that is terrifying to me. But yeah, for some reason, holy monkey, I am afraid of wasps. I I think I I must have talked about this in a different episode, something about the wasps. You had wasps infesting 
your van. Yeah. We had a minivan or something like yes, that. Yes, yes. We've and had they chased you out of your own vehicle. Yeah, we had a lot of wasps with in our old house. I mean we're away from that house now, but I'm sure the wasps are just nearby waiting for us. But we would get a wasp's nest in the peak of the roof at the front of the house. We get one in the peak of the roof at the back of the house. We had an old swing set that uh, my wife's parents had brought out. And the wasps built a nest in the tube that goes along the top. They were inside there. And, and the kids were afraid to use the swing set now because there's wasps circling around it. So I'd get the hose out and I'd try and blast it out of the inside of there. And, you know, I'd wind up killing them all and washing them away. And three days later, the nest is back in there they kept coming back again and again i'd do the same thing to the ones up in the peak of the roof i'd spray them out and you know blast that thing down and like the wasp would fall out of it and hit the ground they're sopping wet so they can't fly and i would step on them and get rid of the wasps and a week later that nest is built back up there again and i'm just like where i mean didn't i just kill all the wasps that were in there already but yeah, we had a lot of wasps. And yeah, like you were saying, we had our old minivan where it was the back windshield wiper had broken off and it was gone. So there was just the hole in the back of the door where it went. And as long as we used this minivan, there was no problem because it was mobile and stuff. But it got to the point where it was old and we were ready to get rid of it. And we bought a new van to replace it. And so we just had this one sitting in the yard or on in the yard it was on the driveway and yeah it was just sitting there and it sat for i don't know a month before we finally got rid of it and in that time the wasps found that hole went inside the back door of the van and built a nest inside of it and there's no getting that out man yeah i i tried to i mean i sat there with a hose and squirted in the hole squirted in the hole and then like a wasp would stumble out and fall onto the ground because it was sopping wet and I'd step on it then I'd spray in the hole and spray in the hole and another one would come out and I kept doing that and I would do it for like an hour and kill I don't know 20 wasps or more and then the next day there's more in there I'd see them fly down and land on our door and crawl in the hole incessantly I never got stung by one though so I guess I you know, disposed of their homes wisely. I don't know what the deal. The, the hose really works good. But that, now imagine if you had been driving that that van. <laughs> and yeah, they were in. Could they have gotten inside the car? They're inside the door, right? I would think so. But I don't know exactly how it would work. I'm sure, you know, bugs can squeeze in and out of the smallest little cracks. So I bet they could. I, I mean, I never. I Once I discovered that that was in the door, I would not get in the van. I just wouldn't do it because I didn't want to be in an enclosed location with a bunch of wasps. Because it's just asking for it. You know, what I talk about being stung by bees as a kid. Everything was a bee that could sting to me. I mean, I didn't know the difference between a wasp and a hornet and a bee and, you know, a bumblebee and a yellow jacket and whatever the frick else there is. They were all bees to me. So I may have been stung by a wasp or stung by a bee. I have no idea. Really. How many times have been stung by a wasp versus a bee kind of a thing? I mean, you say you've probably been stung once by the 20 wasps that you've encountered or whatever. I have no idea if I've ever been stung by a wasp or only been stung by wasps. What, what other insect do you find especially creepy crawly? Or what other thing? When we talked crustaceans, arachnids, are there any other classifications of small creepy things oh, we were talking about vermin uh -huh. before mosquitoes are vermin they are disease carrying yes, they're, they're, mosquitoes are, are bad actually i'll bet there are more deaths per year caused by mosquitoes than caused by snakes uh, just yeah, agree with me and we'll move I can, on i can believe that uh, but i'm not afraid of mosquitoes at all no fear of mosquitoes in any way I, I mean maybe if i lived in some region where they're like oh geez the mosquitoes malaria folks sids these mosquitoes are <laughs> these mosquitoes cause these mosquitoes SIDS. are causing feline aids you know it's just like i maybe i would be afraid then but now it's just yeah those don't even though i know like i said that uh people die because of mosquito bites all the time 
Yeah, we run stories all the time on the news about the mosquito abatement people who go out and actually spray ponds to kill mosquito larvae so that the mosquitoes, they, we don't get enough mosquitoes to make it a real issue. Those guys are doing the Lord's work. Yes. Those guys along with the Mormon crickets. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, the Episcopalian beetles. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we run that kind of stuff all the time. And also the other story that we endlessly run is we found the first case of West Nile virus in this city. That's the first case this year. West Nile virus is, I guess today's version of the malaria i mean malaria is i don't know if it, it, it only happens in areas where it's much more tropical or if it still happens at all you know i think there's a vaccine for malaria is there not is that something that you can be vaccinated against or is it not do you know uh, i i think i've heard if you can drink uh i was going to make a crystal pepsi reference but then i realized how much that would be dating myself so what was the Blue Mountain Dew called that you didn't like? Voltage. You looked up malaria to see? Yeah, just to see if you could be vaccinated. And? Um, apparently you can, yeah. UNICEF helps provide life-saving vaccines to children. Malaria vaccination. Oh, well, that's good. Donate to UNICEF uh, after you're done donating to Big Anchorage, folks. Malaria is you can get vaccinated against. I, I, I assume it still exists. I know there's a lot of places around the world where it still kills people. And it's mainly because the vaccine hasn't spread widely enough and it's one of those things that they're always trying to provide to third world countries that that and fresh running water kind of a thing yeah that's going to be a problem <laughs> there's also that dengue fever yeah we've heard about that is that is that is bad huh? spread by mosquitoes as well but yeah i don't think any I don't, it's pretty hard to come across dengue fever in the united states that's again another one of those things that's much more prevalent in tropical areas you got to go down to south america to get that kind of stuff but West Nile, that's that's one of those things that seems to be creeping steadily further north and further north. I think it started down in, you know, Mexic you know, areas along the Mexican border. It's not started in the Nile? Well, I I, I'm, I don't know where it is. I'm talking in the United States where it started. It started down south in the areas where it connects to Mexico, and it's just creeping north every year. There's areas further north that are reporting cases of West Nile and the same, I think, mosquito abatement guys will find mosquitoes. You know, they'll just go out and catch mosquitoes and then they'll test them to see if they have West Nile. And they'll find, yeah, we found the first mosquito that has po tested positive for West Nile. It was here in this area. So use DEET, which nobody actually does. The, the one thing about West Nile is it can kill you. But it probably won't unless you're one of those people that's in kind of the danger groups. <laughs> I can't think of the right word for it. But you're you know, vulnerable. Right. right. Yeah. The people like senior citizens that are already old and, you know, weaker or small children or the people who think that planes and turbo are Pixar movies. So those those people yes. are all particularly yes. susceptible or somebody who's got immune problems to begin with. Those are the people that actually die from West Nile, other people, it'll probably just make them sick, quite sick sometimes. Okay, but the point I was going to make is you've done a story on West Nile virus being spread by mosquitoes, and then you see a mosquito in your house. Do you start shrieking? <laughs> no. No. Why do we not? Why, why do we not have a switch in our heads that's like, these are deadly, these are bad, these bite, these suck blood, they pass a disease from one person to the other? That's all. That's what they do. They lay eggs and suck blood. Why is it that I'm not afraid of those? Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Have you ever done that? Like when you were a teenager and you get to the point that you can do this where a mosquito lands on your arm and it's sucking blood from you and you see that it's doing that. And so you flex. You squeeze it and it pops the mosquito. And you just keep squeezing it until it, you know it's to the point where it's got so much blood in it that it... See, that's not something you would do with a cockroach. Although, I guess, you know, some people, I mean, they have the crap like the cockroach eating contests and stuff like that, where people will actually eat cockroaches. People eat Philly cheese sandwiches, too. That's true. I hadn't considered that. Yeah, I just thought I would bring it up since we're talking about creepy things. Okay, so, so there's that. 
And, but there's no knowing why you were not. Uh, yeah, that, that that's just a feat. That's something that we've all done. I mean, I've squeezed before just to see if you know you can pop mm-hmm. a mosquito. But how about centipedes? Centipedes with many, many, many legs. <laughs> to me, they're not scary at all. Although I don't go around picking them up, and we don't have huge centipedes around here. Like wh- uh, wherever Gino lives, I'll bet there's centipedes that carry babies away at night. You know. Right. I don't, but what is, do you, are you afraid of centipedes? Oh, wow. I just looked it up, and there's a picture of a guy holding a centipede that's as big as a person's head. Okay, well, I, I may have to look at that. That is a big centipede. Okay, but that's what I was talking about. <laughs> that's it, the one that carries away some, the baby. Some people. I think I've like seen it. very few centipedes in my life, to tell you the truth. Millipedes, I think. I don't know that they're real. That's a real thing, right? Sure. You've never seen millipedes? I've probably seen a millipede this month. I'm just making sure that I'm uh-huh. not making something up. Yeah, millipedes are the think, many, 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 many yeah, little I legs. think I've seen way more millipedes than centipedes if I've ever seen centipedes. Looking at the pictures of these things, they look like the bad aliens from Starship Troopers or something. They look beyond the things that you might find on Earth. That's weird that you've not... But how, You've lived here for a decade and you've never seen centipedes or... Or well, millipedes. I don't see. I mean, I've seen millipedes. That's what I'm saying. I think that's what I've seen much more. Okay. These things with the gigantic legs that that I'm seeing here in these pictures. Right. I don't know that I've seen many of them, if any of them. Or well, maybe I, I'm just imagining them as being much larger <laughs> than they really are, and I have seen them. They were just smaller. Well, here they're yeah they're tiny. They're they're and they're I've never been bitten by a centipede, but the crawliness. Of a spider's legs. We talked about that at last year or two years ago or something like that. That that is something that gives people the willies. But a centipede essentially is a snake with spider's legs. But, but you know, dozens of spider's legs. And so I wondered if that upset you. But having not maybe, – maybe there are no centipedes in Sacramento and you've never been around them. Somehow I don't think I've – you know, like I'm saying, I've seen lots of millipedes where they're really small, A. They're like – Smaller than you know the, your millipedes apple. are the ones that, that that can they roll into like a spiral you know kind of thing that kind of thing in there yeah they're they're usually dark brown and they they, they look like they're yeah when I think of a centipede thing. I think of like a black very thin with the, the legs are really really small right they're not it spider looks, legs they it looks like a snake with fuzzy hairs all the way around mm-hmm. it not like a snake with spider's legs. Like these centipedes that I'm I'm looking at these pictures. And A, there's the guy holding one up and it's the size of his head. So that may be part of the reason why I think, wow, I've never seen anything like that. But then there's a bigger picture next to it of one just sitting on the dirt. And is it That upsetting? looks very large and creepy. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what I would do if I was to see something like that other than step on it. But that's a good thing about being rather large compared to all of these things. I'm sure we've talked about this before, but... It sure is a good thing that they're not our size. It's a good thing that Volkswagen beetles aren't real beetles. (laughs) Because if insects were that size, the world would be a friggin' scary place. I think insects that size would be so much scarier than actual dinosaurs roaming the earth. Because insects, oh, they're, they're so different than... Everything You know, like the majority of animals out there are mammals or birds, even fish. They're, they're really similar in makeup, it seems. But insects seem like they're just from a different planet. It's like we evolved and then some alien species sent a spore on an asteroid that crashed on here. And then there was all these insects inside of it and they came out and joined the party. And we all seem to go together, but these... I mean, there's... But you, did you really just say that people and fish are closer to one another than insects and people? Yes. Okay. Insects I... are... A, there's a bazillion different kinds. Yes. Weird ones. And there are three different kinds of fish, I understand. <laughs> there are <laughs> weird... But they're fish are fish. There's all, like, just fins and tails. You know, there's not one that has, like, 50 fins. And then the other one that has... Unless, I guess, maybe the octopus and all that crap count as fish? No. 
Because they're crustaceans? I think those are arthropods. <laughs> oh, arthropods. Oh, okay. So there is another classification we didn't mention. Wait, no. What is like a... Like squids and all what that What is stuff? a squid? And a, who was it that used to know all this animal Oh, I'm stuff? sure Abby probably knows all that uh, stuff. She, she what was taxidermies it was? freaking uh, roadkill sometimes, so... No, she just said that so the men would leave her alone. Oh. No, who was it that... Lishmerzeski. Oh, that's right. Had yeah. she wasn't she the one that bred monarch butterflies? Yeah, I think so. And she yeah. had an encyclopedic knowledge of insects. Yeah, she's a that science was just teacher fascinating and learned all that me. crap and, and was able to pass it on to her students. I think, but yeah, if she was here, she'd be able to clue us into all the different things. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. The, the you don't have one fish that has dozens of fins and the other one that just has two. Yeah, but, but you, you have, have a insects. fish that can inflate its body and you have fish that, that look like dragons and you have fish that look like horses and you have fish. That, I mean, these are real things. I think it's... Uh, uh, you think you would have heard of it if there was a fish that looked like a horse? I think a seahorse is an arthropod. <laughs> <sighs> but you have these ones that have a hundred legs or a million legs. I don't, I don't know what but yeah, exactly I don't a think a centipede is, a, is an insect, though. So. Yeah, that's probably true. I didn't think about that. Okay, we'll say bugs. Okay, no, bugs is all inclusive. Bugs yes. includes millipedes, centipedes, spiders. And your son. Yes. You know, you have the six-legged ones. You have the hundred-legged ones. And there's so many of them. Oh, they're just gross. I don't know. You just look at them. They look like what you always see an alien look like on a movie. Aliens very seldom look like just a mammal. Except for Chewbacca. You don't get a lot of aliens that just look like, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, that guy could be a mammal. Just two arms, two legs, and a lot of her hair. No, they're always just like disgusting things, like the giant beetle things that they had on they had to fight in Starship Troopers. I almost said Starship Sofa. <laughs> Starship Troopers. I, I bet you anything there has been beetles fought on Starship Sofa. Yeah, probably. But the 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 alien that comes that that. It comes to Earth, I must say. The alien that's been described the most times looks like a baby. You know what I mean? The greys or whatever, those look like um, human babies, right? With the giant eyes and the... But they're tall and skinny and creepy. Okay, well, then they look like the infants of basketball players. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yes, okay, I, I, I hear you. The, the idea of a bug-like alien is, it's more alien. The cool thing it's about more, it. It's more, here's us and that's them. It's uh -huh. more... Different. An alien is the right word you, you removed. Want. That's the but, word I yeah. use. An insect is more re removed than um, like even a gray or like you know. You a lot of times they have reptilian kind of aliens, but they're fairly similar to to us compared to a, a bug with no, dozens and dozens of legs and you know that kind of stuff. Where it just it just seemed like you know what I'm saying. It just seems strange that these things evolved in the same from the same starting point as we did whereas a lot of other things you look at it oh yeah okay that's like us this not like us <laughs> well did they evolve from the same starting point but everything uh, had let's to just evolve. assume that they came from like trilobites you know what i mean well that's not we didn't come from trilobites that's not the same starting point though you go back far enough and there's a starting point just like goo right that's a, that's yeah like alive. the single celled thing that started becoming a double and triple celled and and then it went weird and it became an octopus wait octopuses are nice they're fish platypus that's what you're thinking of. <laughs> but the, the cool thing about insects as writers of science fiction do a little research into insects and you can come up with some really good aliens very simple to take an insect and then imagine it into an alien We've probably gone on long enough about creepy crawlies. It wasn't even what we were actually going to talk about when we started, but somehow we veered off course. At least it was something scary. We didn't veer off course on something stupid that we just had to throw away because we couldn't use we it in the marathon. But uh, yeah, I think we've probably talked enough. But we haven't even talked about chiggers and, and, and ticks yet. Yeah, chiggers. Do you remember the first time you heard that word? On like a commercial, surely. Yeah, it had to have been like a deep woods off. Protects yeah. against chiggers. And you're like, what? 
<laughs> that think... word is so ugly <laughs> that that scares me way more than if they were called ankle biters. <laughs> you know? Yeah. The funny thing is, I think the first time or the first many times I probably thought it was jiggers. I think that's the word that I heard when they would say it, j jiggers instead of ch chiggers. But I don't know why that would be and what a jigger might be. Is that someone that dances a jig? He's a jigger. <laughs> Technically, I would think yes. <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, uh, thanks for listening to today's episode, folks. And watch out for chiggers. I'm Big Anklevich. Yes, and I'm Rich Outfield. And watch out, Gino. Watch your children, for the centipedes are coming. Yes, we want your children carried off and raised by centipedes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, we'll see you later. Thanks for listening. The centipedes taught him everything he knows. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, no derivatives license. That means you can copy it, share it, and make paper dolls out of it. But you can't sell it or use it in your little voodoo rituals. I'm talking to you, sir. Uh, where it's a mass, uh, where it's a, I, I shoot, there was a word I was going to use that I thought would be amusing instead of like murder or, or swarm, but I can't remember what it was going to be. Gaggle? No, it wasn't an actual word. It was like a flickinger of, you know, that, that kind of thing, but I can't remember what the word was. It was going to be a callback to something we had talked about earlier, but oh. I, I couldn't come up with it. But what is it you're looking up, sir? I was just looking up who said wasp for the skinheads. Craig Ferguson. Oh, Craig Ferguson of The Late Show? Yeah. This is from many years ago before he was of the late show, though. Was was for the skinheads of the insect kingdom. Yeah, they'll sting you just because they want to. The funny, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I swear, we because they want. To. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny, but that's funny to me. <laughs> just because they want to. Yeah.